What's up friends? Today I wanted to talk to you about a important concept, an important life principle uh, that's not very much fun to talk about. I wish it wasn't true, but it is. And that is the idea that change takes time. Um, I've blogged about this before. You might recognize it. Um, the idea that change is a crock pot, not a microwave. Uh, and I'm going into my 12th year teaching now and I wanted to make this video because I know that there are a lot of new teachers that are watching my YouTube channel and checking out my blog and seeing the things that I'm doing and everything that I make my purpose is to inspire you to give you resources to help you learn different ways and tricks and hacks and strategies to become a better teacher and so the last thing I would want any of my videos to do is to become discouraging to somebody to be something that you look at and you say wow like Ben has all this cool stuff in his gym, like a rock wall and awesome music setup and iPod and, and uh, monkey bars and these climbing ropes and a TV on the wall and like that's just so far off and it can maybe uh, become discouraging and, and you can fall into what's called the comparison trap where you compare your beginning to someone else's middle and especially you don't want to compare your beginning to someone else's end. Uh, today I wanted to uh, just walk you through my last 11 years uh, building my PE program and to let you know that it's been a long process and um, you know just now I'm finishing up my 11th year I'm going into my 12th year of teaching just now I'm finally seeing the vision that I had for my PE program when I started it's starting to come into fruition and I'm starting to see some of the things that I always thought in the back of my head wow that would be really awesome if I could get that set up in my gym and that was a vision I was moving towards. It just takes a long time to get there. So let's take a look at the timeline of my change in my PE program over the last 11 years. So let's talk about the timeline of uh, my gym and the things that I've gotten uh, over the course of time. Uh, like I said, 2007 is when I started and I just um, was learning how to teach, trying to learn as much as I could, kind of thinking about what I wanted a PE program to look like, but really just staying alive and learning a ton, trying to um, figure out what a year curriculum looks like, how to plan lessons, um, and just how to manage and uh, manage behavior and things like that. Same thing 2008, just figuring things out. Um, I wish I had some pictures of the gym because it looks totally different. There was nothing on the walls, zero rock walls, zero ropes. We didn't have a bathroom. We didn't have a water fountain. We didn't have uh, any of the stuff that pretty much is on any of the walls right now. In 2009, our PTO uh, got us this awesome rock wall, so we were able to get this, this uh, five panels, 20 feet. This was a great uh, thing for us to be able to do as a station activity. Uh, you can only have five students on it at a time, so it was hard to get a whole class on it, but it was definitely a big win for our PE program, so that was my third year teaching uh, when we were able to get this rock wall. <laughs> This next one is a biggie, um, and it was a little bit a combination of luck and timing, but also initiative and um, advocating for our program. Um, so the previous three years, I was actually traveling between this school and another school, and this was the first year that I was able to get a full-time job at this school as the a main PE teacher. Um, and previously, we had a disgusting plastic waffle floor. Um, I wish I had some pictures to show you what it looks like but it, if you imagine a cheese grater, um, but made out of plastic. So anytime kids would fall down, it would just grate their knees or their elbows. Um, we had tons of injuries um, and the balls didn't bounce very well on it. It was totally indestructible, so that was nice. You didn't have to worry about scratching it, um, but it was a horrible floor for teaching PE. Uh, and our, our school district passed a bond referendum, and previous to that, this was a wall right here. So there was, there was no bathroom or water fountain in the gym. We had to send kids down the hallway. And um, we were one of the few gyms in the district without a bathroom. And so they, they took out this area of the wall and took a piece of our equipment room and, and retrofitted us with a bathroom and also gave us a really nice rubber floor, um, which since I was the full-time PE teacher, I was able to design all these lines myself, um, which was a huge win because I got to kind of figure, like put the lines that I wanted 
for the things that I was gonna be teaching that I thought would be best for our students. So yes, um, you know, bond referendums are kind of something that doesn't come around a lot, uh, but if that had happened and we hadn't presented those requests and advocated for our program and explained why that was good for students, um, we would have never gotten the bathroom and the water fountain and I would have never gotten, we could have never gotten the new floor line. So if you're not willing to take the initiative to advocate, um, it is not gonna happen. So luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So after um, getting the job full time at the school, um, one of my big priorities was getting a reliable music setup that would allow me to move around the room uh, because previously the, um, what we had was an old stereo with no remote that played CDs, didn't play an iPod, and um, the CDs were always skipping. We had to roll it out and roll it back in every day to get um, out of the way of our after school program. So one of the first things I did was submit a proposal to um, get this iPod and uh, stereo mounted on the wall. Um, and I actually have a Bluetooth setup now where I can walk around the room and play music without having to be in one spot so I can give kids feedback, go around the room, do instructions wherever I want, and um, never have to set this up. It's always up on the wall, so it's a huge time saver. So that getting my music set up for management was a big win. <laughs> Next up in 2012, I bought some uh, climbing ropes for my gym. Um, I had been wanting to get some more muscular strength building stations that were fun for kids. Um, American Ninja Warrior was getting popular, um, obstacle course racing, all that kind of stuff. And so I wanted to have some more fun things we could do besides just exercise, push ups, curl ups, and that kind of stuff. We had the one climbing wall, got the climbing ropes, couldn't afford to buy the crash mats for them, so they just sat in my equipment room for an entire year. Hated it. Uh, it was just killing me to have those in there. Um, and then the next year we kind of combined our PE budget with a fundraiser and bought some crash mats and got the climbing ropes put up on the wall. So I have one swinging rope for students and one climbing rope and uh, that was a big win. So that was 2013 uh, that we finally got those up. We got the ropes in 2012, got the mats in 2013, and then we had one rock wall section two climbing ropes, we were on our way. And then one of the biggest game changers, 2014, was getting this guy up on the wall, the flat screen TV. Um, I vlogged in detail about that, so I won't go into a lot of details about it, but I'll link it up below if you want to check it out, how I did it. I built the box myself because I couldn't get the protective case approved. Uh, it was too expensive. Um, and so I really wanted to make it happen, so I the school bought the TV and the supplies for me and I, I built that box to go around it to protect it from the after school program and any like stray objects that might fly out there and mess it up during PE class. Big win because it allowed me to show kids great visuals, give them um, replays of themselves, show them professional athletes, show them videos, YouTube videos, just dance, uh, swerk it, fitness blender, warm ups, just tons of online resources that I wouldn't be able to um, show kids because uh, even if I had a projector, rolling it out, having the cord, just the setup and take down would take too much time. And this is always ready to go at the push of a button. In 2015, uh, my big thing that I pushed for was writing a grant on Donor's Shoes. I actually had to write it two times. Got didn't get funded the first time. The second time around, I got it funded uh, to get two iPad minis so that I could do some more advocacy with video, um, like using iMovie to create highlights, sending them to classroom teachers and my principal and my administration and parents um, to show them the things that we were doing in PE class. So I've blogged about that. I'll link it down below as well if you want to try to do something similar. Uh, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, you can um, do some really, really great things to advocate for your program using those tools. Uh, so in 2016, um, one of the things that I got that I'd honestly never even thought about getting before, um, which I can't believe I taught for so long without it because it was so helpful, was a wireless mic. Um, and so that just allowed me to save so much energy and to still allow students to hear me throughout the gym. Um, and at the end of the day, 
I feel totally different without having to like raise my voice and, and use that loud gym voice all day. Um, and be able to calmly talk to students uh, when I know they're gonna be able to hear me because my voice comes through the speaker. So I have that set up on, goes through my stereo. Um, links down below for that as well if you wanna check it out. Last year was the first year that we had this. Um, our second rock wall section. So now I can actually take an entire class and uh, put them on the monkey bars and cargo net, which I'll show you right here. Here's the monkey bars. Um, we have a little rock wall area. The kids climb up and they climb across the monkey bars. Uh, so I have this as a station area, cargo net and pull up bar. So this little corner of the gym is like a climbing uh, muscular endurance station area where I can easily just pull down the mats and um, be ready to go. Do this wall as a station, that wall as a station. The whole class is doing climbing activities with swinging ropes. Um, it's like American Ninja Warrior style uh, lessons in PE class. The kids love it and it's a great muscular strength building uh, tool. So I was really pumped to get that. I'd submitted a proposal three times, three years in a row for this. And um, the third year, 2017, was the one that the um, PTO finally agreed that it would be a school-wide thing. All the kids would get to use it, so it was a good use of the fundraiser funds that they, they did for that year. So I was really pumped. It's, we, we have supportive parents um, here, but just to highlight, this would not have happened if I hadn't advocated for it. So don't forget to submit proposals, advocate for your program, go out to local businesses, try to get them to sponsor your school and, and get you the things that you need to be able to teach your kids um, quality PE. That kind of wraps it up guys. I just wanted to take you through that timeline to kind of illustrate the point that um, change doesn't happen quickly. It takes time. Um, you know, if you think about vertical alignment with your program, if you're getting to a school, it's your first year at the school, you don't know what those students have learned in previous years. And so each uh, year that you build on top of that, you're building your, your program knowledge into your students. That first year, kindergarten, for me in elementary, kindergarten through fifth grade students, all have zero of my philosophies and the instruction that I will be giving them. The second year, you know, everybody's got two years, but by the year number five, your fifth grade students have been with you so long that you can have them come in after a summer break and they can tell you all the rules because you've built that relationship with them, you know all the previous instruction, all the things that you've been teaching them are leading to that final year in elementary school. So. Um, it will get better. Year number three was a big year where I started to notice a lot of the things that I was teaching. Uh, students were really starting to grasp them because um, you know, as you get to teach students more and more, hopefully your program philosophies, the things like good sportsmanship and the character traits you're trying to teach students will start to be more ingrained in them. And you'll start to see the fruit of the things that you've been working hard to try to teach students, but it's not gonna happen quick. It takes time, so you gotta be patient. Um, I hope that was helpful. I just wanted to have a little heart to heart with you because I never want anybody that's watching any videos that I make to inspire and to equip and to help um, you become a better teacher. I never want that to discourage you. I never want you to compare your beginning with someone else's middle or someone else's end. Um, because when you're looking at people that you want to emulate, you have to remember that uh, They've been working very hard for a long time to get to those places where they are to build what they have. And honestly, the, the most helpful advice I can probably give you is just try to enjoy the ride. Try to enjoy the process of building your program and watching the growth take place over time. Um, it's hard to be patient, but it is important to remember that change will happen. You just gotta wait on it. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Have fun and teach on. Did a good what? job being quiet while we were filming. Well, one day I want to talk you to. Can you say uh, the PE specialist.com? Have fun and teach on. <laughs> See you guys later.